Hello, this is an ice cream cone. Congratulations, ice cream cone education. Today, I've been set the challenge of making a three course meal which must include ice cream cones in every course. But how did we get here? Well, Tom. So yesterday, after the lovely Asian drinks taste test the other day, Tom decided to uh, set me this challenge of making three courses that must include the cones. Is this it? The official rules are, you have to create a three course dinner, starter, main, dessert. All courses have to include the use of ice cream cones, but not wafers. Ah, oh, I was gonna do a lasagna. Yeah, sorry. Game of cones, let's begin. Don't wanna boast, but I knew those rules ahead of time. So last night, after collecting my inspiration, I headed to the supermarket. The irony is I'm just leaving my house and it is zero degrees. <laughs> like, I think of ice cream cones as being a summer thing. Look, see, it is zero degrees. Uh, it's not 2 a.m. I need to change the clock in my car. This is blooming ridiculous. Yeah, these are the only ones that are technically cones that I can use. So I've got to stick to the rules. Half the stuff on my list is not in the basket, but we'll see how it goes. Right. That was quite cool. Back from the supermarket, I have one of those, this happens all the time, especially 4321 videos, right? I just, as in the supermarket, I have my shopping list, my bizarre shopping list, got my bags, and it's like, I had this like, wait, I was oh, it's inspiration. So I hope it works. <laughs> we'll get to the kitchen in the morning. Let me know what you would do, but anyhow, my first course is mozzarella stick ice cream cones. Yes, using one of these, although it's uh, got a hole in the end, I'm gonna have to seal it. Uh, we should hopefully be able to make it. Well, we're one down. All right, so uh, Tom is here picking up some extra shots if needs be. Uh, the main hub for your mozzarella cones is gonna be a big old slab of mozzarella. Remember, I've done some homemade mozzarella before as well. So we're gonna open this up and disappointingly, these cones are actually not that big. Um, so we are gonna have to try and find a way to absolutely wedge our cheese in there. We're gonna fry these. We're gonna actually do an ice cream cone crumb. Does that sound good, Tom? It does sound good, actually. Yeah. We'll are they sweet ice cream cones? They are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like they all said Maybe with, good now. with sweetener on the boxes. So, um, oh, gosh, I really hope this works. Let's just push that in there. I don't think I'm getting it fully in there. <laughs> no, I can't get it out. Oh my gosh. Oh no. I'm gonna have to cut the mozzarella really, really fine. Really little pieces like this, just to start building it up. That is way better. What do you think about that? That's full of cheese. It's definitely a, a thing, isn't it? Right, let's see if we can enclose it. So talk, talk to me about the theory behind stuffing cheese in a cone. We're gonna put the cone in here to get it wet. Yeah. Sounds really nice. Um, and then it'll dry out and then we fry it. I trust you. Okay. I trust the process. Because <laughs> if I fry it like that, it's gonna like just fall out. However, I've never done this before. Oh, that's pretty tough. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna change my strategy. Right, so if I put this down on there, look, if I bond that, and then, oh, this one's starting to come over now. It's start, oh, there we go. Can we see this? Look at that. That is start, it's very, very wet, however, that's where this one piece of kitchen towel will come in, but I'm gonna do like a safety net on it. So getting these extra little pieces like that and sort of building a roof on it to stop the mozzarella from escaping. <laughs> what the? What do you think? It's working. It is, isn't it? Right, well, we will, yeah, we will keep going on our mission. Right, we're there. I'm gonna make a couple more of these uh, and I'll see you in a minute. That looks pretty disgusting, Barry. So we've got some eggs that I mixed together with some uh, pepper and salt, flour, some herbs and spices, bit of paprika in there, we love paprika, don't we? And then possibly the most fun thing I've ever done is smash up a load of uh, cones to create a cone crumb. That is a very satisfying noise. Now these are pretty darn gummy right now. <laughs> like it's really sticky. So the cool thing is um, we can actually start to dredge it immediately in our seasoned flour to kind of like dry it out. Now look, does that not look appetizing? It doesn't. No? No. So now we'll plonk it in. We'll get it completely soaked. Back into the flour. There we go. Does that look like a cone anymore? I'm not quite sure. Back into the egg and then straight into our coney crumb mixture. Here we go. Coney crumb. Sounds like someone I went to school with. Oh wow, this is actually working quite well. 
Right, back in the wet one more time. Oh my goodness, I'm having to use two hands so I'm going all gummy. Uh, really want to get that top part dunked, so I'm going to put that down in first, then lift that back in. I mean, it doesn't really look much like a cone. It doesn't look like a cone. It does. Damn it, it does. <laughs> that is going to dry out and we're going to fry it. We have got the fryer ready. It's hot, uh, so let's shove it in. In fact, I might just get a better standing there because actually Tom, Tom's helping me, so this, I, don't, I don't need to do this. Here we go. They're floating. They're floating, no! This is good though, I can turn them. Oh, do you know what, that is holding together. Oh my goodness, it's, it's working. It's actually working. Ah! Come on! Oh my gosh, what was that? I was, I was listening to Run DMC or something. Oh, shiver me timbers, look at that. It's like wincing, it's crying. Or screaming in happiness, I'm not sure, but it is really clean, it's held together. Oh no, I missed the blooming. <laughs> right, um, mustard is, is the, we, we, if we're inventing this thing, that's the thing, if this works, right, this could be everywhere, this could be the new viral trend. See if we can get any sort of break on this. Oh my gosh, there was an air pocket. <gasps> oh, oh, uh, oh my gosh, where's it going? I can start doing skips. <laughs> Look at this. This is insane. Should I try it with the mustard? I don't know if I want to. I'm going to go without it. That's good, Tom. Yeah? That's really, really good. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness! Look at that! I'm gonna have a bit of mustard on mine. That's really good. Translation? That's really good. Mmm. <laughs> you cannot notice the sweetness that I tasted in that cone it's earlier. It's just gone, isn't it? You can't notice it at all. What a start! Anyhow, main course ice cream cone fish. For this one, I had a Jamie Oliver book lying around. I thought, oh yeah, that's actually quite a good base recipe, a fish pie with phyllo pastry that I can adapt and enhance and add some different bits to. First step, I preheated my oven to 180C fan or equivalent to get that going. Grabbed myself my frying pan, shoved in some frozen fish fillets, so no oil needed, right down on my hob, medium flame, and poured over some lovely white wine sauce that I had. Popped the seal and then let it bubble away as it simmers in a nice fishy jacuzzi. So I made a little green party in my bowl, mixing together spinach and peas and dumped that in the pan, getting that all nice and combined. After a couple of minutes, got some cheese, grated that on there, looking absolutely gorgeous, and then an extra grind of pepper on top, stirring that all through. It was looking sensational. Plenty of room for me ice cream cones. So these are a slightly different type of cone, but um, it kind of reminds me of those games. You remember you used to press it and the board fly out and you got to try and catch it? Yeah, that's what these are based on. That is a complete lie. This is going to be my pie topping, so I just broke them up uh, into sort of larger pieces really to kind of act as the crust. Started that, dumping that on top of the mixture. Uh, and I finished it with some lovely garlic oil, all drizzled on top there, baking it for 15 minutes. Once it was out of the oven, I got some cheese and grated it on there. I mean, I could have pushed the colour on the cones a bit more, maybe burning them slightly. We could have gone nacho territory, which was actually another idea I had. But instead, I uh, left it as is with the cheese on top. This is it, an ice cream cone, one pan fish pie. And it smells like a pan of confusion. Let's try it. All right, here goes nothing, huh? You think excited about this, Tom? I'm looking forward to it. Let's see, because it has actually bitten a little bit into that sauce, like kind of like our cones at the start, right. Oh, what? I'm not getting so much crunch because the top bit is crunchy, but the rest is soaked in there with it. Well, it's a bit lopsided on the plate, but it'll do. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> try and get as much cone as you can. <laughs> yeah. I'm struggling to get through the cone. <laughs> this is not a phrase you say that often. That is very different. It sort of works, but it tastes like a soggy Yorkshire pudding. It is like a soggy Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, where it's had a bit too much gravy in it, where you made a Yorkshire pudding and the gravy's in it and it's sat in there too long. Yeah, I think the crunchy, yeah, the, it's, the crunchy bits are minimal, 
is it still acting like a pastry pie in a way, like a like a pastry would? Yeah. That's nice. It's strange. <laughs> so I reckon if you'd had that straight out of the oven, because mm. obviously the magic of TV and stuff, we have to wait a little while, get a few extra bits done. If you'd had that straight out of the oven, that would have been really crunchy on top, I think. Welcome to my world. Right, so uh, time for dessert, which I don't even know. I forgot what I was going to call this. We'll just wing it. This is my mosaic tropical ice cream cone frisbee. Tastes so bad, it deserves to be thrown. Okay, this is a bit of the freestyle one. For this one, we uh, got some of the cones again and smashed them up into uh, shards because we want to join them. I've gone for these ones because I think they break a little bit easier. Like rather than our fish pie one was a bit thicker, I want to get dust or shards for my mosaic. And to make that, we get quite dangerous indeed. A frying pan, pouring the sugar in, a nice, low, steady flame. And the moment it starts to fully liquefy and go amber, completely dissolved, we then chuck in the ice cream cone pieces to let it bite and cool down with it. Now, unfortunately, it didn't go to plan. Oh, no. Yeah, the spatch is not getting under it. It's a non-stick pan, but unless... Um, Gosh. Yeah, I think that looks stuck to me. However, I had a solution. Oh yeah, oh look at that color. You can see that so well. And this time I know I can get it off, which is obviously quite helpful. Yeah, baby. Oh, look at this. Rather than marshmallow fluff, I got a load of marshmallows, bunged them into a bowl, microwaved them together to kind of make them into this sort of Ghostbuster-esque mess. Dollop that on top of our brittle carefully and whilst it was still warm, got some tinned pineapple chunks, bringing in that tropical vibe, dolloping it onto the marshmallow for it to bite it and also hold in the wafer underneath. And now, oh yeah. So I blistered that marshmallow all over to really char it and well, maybe we got a little bit excited with the uh, chef's torch there. Oh my gosh, we're on fire. We were on fire. Now close your eyes and smell that and like imagine you're on a tropical island. Are you there? Yes. Yeah, either that or shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Away from flames, I wanted to bring that tropical vibe back, so I sprinkled on a load of coconut flakes, really getting it over the top there with some melted chocolate that I blasted in the microwave, drizzling that all on top. I don't know what the heck it looks like. In fact, we're going to rename it. So we'll now officially rename it the Ice Cream Cone Lava on a Frisbee Brittle Thing. Oh, and there it is. Oh my God. <laughs> right, let's try it. How you plan on serving it? On the brown on the, paper? Yeah, the brown okay. paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be quite messy. Um, we've got the brittle base, but the, the marshmallow is still a bit gooey. Mm -hmm. The chocolate's still warm. We could set it, but I want to kind of have it as is. So shall I, shall I see if I can slide it off? There we go. Oh my gosh, I love that it's pulling some of the mallow off. Ah, that's insane. Look at that. We still haven't really thoroughly worked out this camera. We both had to kind of like <laughs> stick our heads out of the way. That's insane. The disc underneath is holding it. Oh, look at the amber on it. Oh, I think we kind of smash it. Oh, yeah, do you want to smash your own piece? Oh. Try and do this without getting in my beard. That's tasty though, Barry. Mm. I'll give it to you. That's three courses. You can't taste the ice cream cone. <laughs> you can taste the fire. It's there. The tropicalness. It is, yeah. It's sticking up. That works. It does? Mm hmm Have I achieved this you have. mission? Right. I feel you like I succeeded. need to give you a mission soon. Yeah, come on. Make everything inside an ice cream cone. Everything like... I think from the inside. first video, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of gave us inspiration. Yeah, so. um, with that in note, here's a bonus scene for how you could serve your ice cream cone. Folks, there's a way to make a mozzarella ice cream cone look even more like a mozzarella ice cream cone. Take a mozzarella ball and shove it on the top. Look at that, it's completely optional, maybe overkill. Uh, we'll look out for one of these coming to a food stall near you very, very soon. See you next time, bye.